Greg Minar can have, wow, 20 years, right, of world championships. 20 years, yeah. Well, I missed one, but uh, I, I started practice and then uh, broke my collarbone. Hey, we're looking at uh, 17 years of World Cup podiums. That's like a staggering statistic. That's, um, and then you've got World Cup wins, which span, which, you know, since 2001 and 2016. Um, but people talk, I think, about, you know, the fact that you can't compare yourself to, to Vulio's because he was a different era. But actually, you were part of the Vulio's era, right? You had to race against that guy. Yeah, I raced against Nico for what, three or four years? And uh, the first year was when I was on Animal Orange, my first year elite. And uh, got my first podium with Nico. And then um, the following year, I beat him over in the World Cup overall. So, and, and that was it, but he, he, he did beat us in the World Champs. But the, but the story is you raced against one of the greatest ever racers, right? And everyone yeah. thinks that he was a different era, but he wasn't a different era, he was the well, same era. Yeah, I think he, he, he tallied up most of his wins in the era slightly before. I came in towards the end, but I think what's been really cool is to have been able to race Petey, Nico, Sam Hill, G. Atherton, Aaron, and have a go at all of them. I think that's it, the point. I mean, I mean, Greg's had, you've raced so many tough, really tough races. It's, uh, there must be some easier jobs to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, I, I'm quite compared to always like the challenge of it, but it's, uh, it's certainly been really, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> so here in Val de Sol, um, Another this tough is one. another tough one. Yeah, world champs have always been pretty hard. I mean, I, I've had a consistent run and at them, but it's. I, I don't think I'm. You know, I find like the whole French team were able, like Nico and Fabian, were always able to step things up into world champs. Where I don't think I've ever had that. You know, I've always. Oh, been come on. <laughs> I've been consistent, but it's not like. So think, looking at the three times world champion here. I mean, there's only one person who's got more. Come yeah, but it's not like, uh, you know, I found I could really step things up. And for me, it was just, you know, um, well, my, my second turn, came really late in the career. So for a long period, I didn't, wasn't able to step it up. So, yeah. Um, do, you think, do you think at like World Cup level at the minute, there's, there's a bit of a lack of winners? Um, yeah, there, there could be. I mean, it, it's, it's so tough at the, the top end of the field. And, you know, I think... Downhill is just a tough sport, and when the confidence is right and your bike's right and things are jelling, um, you can make it happen. Look at Danny Hart this year. I mean, he's had years of just not much after winning world champs, and now he's on it. He, he wins his first World Cup, and then he's won another two. So um, I think he's just really found himself in the groove. <laughs> uh, Josh Bryceland in the background there with a bit of background information. Thanks, Josh, for that. Um, look. <laughs> <laughs> the groove of a crack. <laughs> uh, look, I'm going to recap on uh, Greg's. I'm going to recap on Greg's career here. We're looking at 69. Correct me if I'm wrong. 69 podiums, 19 World Cup wins, uh, three World Cup Series wins, and three World Championships. Um, you're 35, 36 in November. 35 in November. Yeah. I mean, you look at Steve Pete over there. Uh, he was Steve. You were 35. You were 35 when you went to Andorra, and then you went and went to World World Championships. I mean, that, that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So Greg, I mean, <laughs> I guess the thing is, um, you, you're here at 35, and this race is still very much for you to kind of take away. Is that because the hashtags fighting the black snake? I didn't. I didn't see that. <laughs> Have you seen the hashtag for the event? Yeah. Find the black snake. It's quite gnarly, no? I mean, you won't look. I mean, the point is, Greg, this is. Uh, it, it, it's. I think. Yeah, I, I've, I'd like to think that I'm competitive, yeah. I think it's had a season where I've been up there a few times and way off the pace, but um, I think it's, it's going to be a different race. It's really tough and really technical. I think it's, it's not going to be someone who. I don't. I might be very wrong, but I think guys are really going to overcook it. And I think it might be a more consistent rider that's going to pull it out. How are you going to approach it? I, I think my approach to every race is just probably a little bit smoother and more consistent than really going for it. I think probably last weekend in Dora was one of the first races where, it, where you could tell that I was really trying to go for it in sections. 
and got a bit loose. But I've tried to, over the last couple of years, try to change my style up from being more smooth and, and carrying speed to just trying to loosen it up a bit and, and be a bit faster. But you won't change. So, uh, you going to go on like Steve Pete has? I don't think I'm going to carry on just as long as Steve, <laughs> but uh, I'm definitely going to do a couple more years. Yeah, I'm enjoying racing right now. I think um, in the last few years the bikes have grown a lot with wheelbase and sizing, and I just fit the bike a lot better. I just have a lot more fun riding. So I, I think that's kind of given me a second win in racing. That's an interesting point, actually, Greg. I mean, we, you know, we five years ago, there's, there's a lot changed in five years in terms of, especially your bike. We talked about this back in the Fox Camp, but I mean, where, where are you at with, uh, with like bike setup at the minute? Then I'm as long as my bike can go, and uh, yeah, just I mean, the comp if if you look, take the last three years, my my suspension rebound has fastened up so much more. Um, my suspension's a lot stiffer. Just because the bike's a lot harder, I can hit stuff a lot, a lot faster, and and now I need harder suspension. So, if you look, if you look at this Valdis Old Track, what would be like if you were to rank the the components of a bicycle, sort of either forks, bike fit, or rear damping? What what, what would you put as the as the primary component in a bike when the, the, when you ride a track like this? Jeez, I don't know. It's. Um I think it's it's more mental than any mechanical thing can handle. It feels so slow and so rough and so off pace the whole way down. And you stop and some guy will come to you and go, oh, you hit that so amazing. It's the first guy, you first I've seen all practice. And you're like, I, I just felt like I was dragging my brakes. Just out. And so I, I think someone with a strong head that can just know where they are on the track in the race, on the bike, I don't think setup's going to make a difference. So what you're saying is you're you're adapting to the terrain and uh, and the occasion rather than any anything mechanical. I think so. I think this track is such a beast that I don't. I mean, unless your bike's that poorly set up, which most of the guys are within a range, roughly the same. I think it's it's all in the rider's head. And this is one of the most uh, incredible competitors there is, Greg. Uh, thanks for your time and. Hey, thanks, James. Yeah, that'd be great to see you racing on Sunday. No, thanks a lot. Huh? There you go.